Listo. So, um, Dirta and I are really pleased that you have come to share this time with us. This is a very special exhibit for us. We've never exhibited before. And um, we, as we um, hung the show, we could see more and more connections and we shared stories, but you can see obviously that in the work, in the colors and the textures, and uh, that inspiration, um, that there's a lot of connections that we've already made for you. Um, this series is called Life's Jackets. Life's Jacket. It started off as Life's Jackets, but it changed with time. I started in 2013, and I was, uh, I liked the life jacket. I don't know if any of you know Alberto Miancas, but he would start some of his paintings with uh, like a t-shirt or underwear, and then he would he would continue on and, and go into very abstract kind of uh, emotions and feelings within that. And so the life jacket kind of has that that uh, opportunity for me to start with. And I like the UFO because it's a synthetic paper and it allows the paint to shift and flow and move on the surface and it doesn't go into the paper. So it's, um, it, it can create some really interesting dynamic kind of gestures that I like. I also like, with the light jacket, it has the ability to show that, that shape as shifting and moving and precarious and fragile. Um, and so that th those are qualities that, that keep me going back to the UK paper. In 2013, I started um, looking at uh, environmental issues and Chernobyl, even though it had happened some time previously, uh, the Deepwater Horizon accident and these kind of things. And so the work started with just looking at these environmental disasters. And I showed those first pieces in February, of 2013 and then by May of 2013 I was diagnosed with cancer and um, I went through uh, a lot of um, changes my body just was really just taken over and um, this is when I met Durda uh, really met Durda we knew each other but she had learned through a friend that uh, I was sick and in the hospital and she wove me a shawl that so that when I looked for treatments that I could um, use that to keep warm and so she I realized how compassionate and how empathetic she was because she didn't really know me very well so to get a gift that she spent so much time on and they were colors that she knew that I liked because she had seen my work um, that was a lot of fun. And so that sparked a beginning of, of trying to nurture this friendship um, on my part. So after I'd gotten sick, um, I felt like it was really important to participate in my healing process. I mean, it, you can go to the best doctors and the best treatments, but if you do not participate, um, your chances or less, and I had uh, my first painting teacher after the University of New Mexico uh, was in uh, Harlingen, and she had had a rare form of cancer, and uh, she was admitted to MD Anderson, and she had been told at that time, which was in, in 1985 maybe, um, that her, her chances of surviving it would be better if she could visualize. So that was the first time I had heard about visualizations. The second uh, influence was a book by Susan Sontag called uh, Illness as a Metaphor. And she talked about you know, various HIV and cancer, and she had cancer, but she, uh, and the history of that, and how people respond. But one of the takeaways was that the metaphor as your body is a battlefield is not a healing metaphor, but you need a metaphor that, that encompasses more healing. 
So I began uh, developing personal images that incorporated nature uh, and that were um, softer and connected me more um, with um, the potential of nature to heal. And sometimes, like um, my friend Janine, I had uh, a fungal pneumonia, so my lungs were not working correctly. And so she's a singer, so I asked her to give me, uh, I had three friends that were singers, and one's one of my niece. And I asked them to give me a favorite bird and a favorite music piece. And every day, it was the finch, right? And the music piece, I don't remember. I can't either, but I had to research for you. But I have it written down in my diary. I didn't get a chance to look. But uh, every day I would do these exercises. So I'd have, I'd start with her as the Finch. And this music she um, gave me, uh, it sound, it was felt like I was in Venice in the canal. So I could see this Finch really starting from, from the ground, going all the way up. And so it really caused my lungs to go in new directions. And the other two birds did the same thing. It created this ability to use the lungs in different capacities. Uh, and so the doctors, the doctors were really surprised. They, they really surprised. In fact, all my doctors have been really surprised. They call me the unicorn. <laughs> 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 because that, it's just very rare to be able to come out of that. So when I, uh, first was able to go back to painting, I did one of my first piece was called The Collabor Collaborators, and it was about the combination of healing, visualization, and hospitals and doctors all coming together to, to bring me back to, to health. And as I got stronger, I started really, I started wanting to dig in deeper into what nature is, and I, um, joined the album Master Naturalist, completed the curriculum, I uh, joined the Native Plant Society, um, because I really wanted to dig down deeper about nature. And so now, uh, in this series, I'm flipping that idea, it's like, do we have the potential to visualize the healing of the earth? We're really in a precarious place where things are shifting. And I recently read a book um, by an eco-psychologist. And the eco-psychologist uh, is, a, is a branch of, of psychology that came out of the environmental uh, movement. So the psychologists believe our mental health is not isolated from our environment. That we are, we are nature, our psyche developed because of nature, and we are, we're here on this planet, we, we're really connected with it. And so when we see this devastation, it affects our mental health, it affects our, our ability to be happy. And a lot of times people don't even realize it because they numb themselves to it. They try to, to avoid it or try to not listen to what's happening. But this woman, Lars, I think it's Sewell, she wrote Sight and Sensibility. She, she believes that to be really fully aware, fully mindful, and in the moment, that you have to, you have to be present, and you have to, to really connect. Now in our culture, we think of, we're taught that the landscape is separate from us. But when you meditate, or you've gone through a near-death experience, you begin thinking, you, be, you start going into sacred time. And when you're in sacred time, you realize everything's interconnected. There, there's every, everything is like pulling together, and you're not an entity in yourself. You are connected. So she suggests um, that you have to really pay attention and put your attention into sorry, don't, 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 don't apologize. Thanks for coming in. That you have to um, begin feeling that relationship 
with your environment. Uh, and the way I do it, um, and it's not a recipe for everyone, everyone has to figure it out. She does it, I think, through meditation and through sitting quietly in places outside and just looking. And she feels like it must be like how you're, how you're looking at the stars at night. After an hour, you see more and more. She says that she starts seeing more and she sees more relationships. The way I do it is I paint. And so when I'm painting, I am I'm already coming down into that that um, part of your brainwave where it's open to suggestion and still awake and it's it's creative. And so when I take a break and go outside, I I'm able to come across you know things that I would normally not wouldn't think about coming across. You see a a bee or a strange insect you've never seen before, or you're staring at a lizard. I think they're called anoles. I can't remember what they're called, but they're, they will, if you just stand there, they will kind of take a good look at you for a long time. But these mystical, these wonderful kind of things will start happening if you're, you're in, in the presence and you're actually paying attention and allowing things in. And the reason I suggest that is um, we, I think that's the beginning of a full recovery of your consciousness from being numb. If you allow yourself to participate in some way at a deeper level with the environment, you're able to see more and more and those connections, those non-human connections that we don't get technology or with people but are only there in the spaces around us really are offering something that we we just don't understand and that can really bring us into a, uh, a wonderful experience so I think I brought you up to the present so I guess if you have any questions I can try to answer them or we can wait to have the dirt to talk would you like to There's a, a wedding agent that Golden makes, and I use that instead of alcohol. But it has the same, uh, it's a sufficient, or I forget what you call that type of quality, where it causes the, the paint to move away like the alcohol. There's a word for it. I'm not, I don't think I've seen it really sort of that. Norma, I don't know if you remember, uh, many moons ago, uh, you displayed with me mm -hmm. over at the Blue Star. Oh, yes. And uh, you had made some small, I don't know if you call them prints or not. They were, they were yeah. monoprints. Yes. And uh, they were really super beautiful pieces that really snapped with the color. Um, then later on, uh, you had complained that you didn't like the surfaces that you were working on. And I don't know if you remember that I said, try Yupo. Maybe, surprise. maybe it was you then. Yes, that, it was that, me. That, I think, it, yeah, when you say that now, it kind of comes to mind. <laughs> 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 um, well, it's, it's just so lovely that Dirta's friends and my friends are here, and I hope you'll spend some time kind of rubbing shoulders, getting to meet each other, and Thank you so much for the support and taking the time to, to listen. Both of us really believe that the arts make a difference in, in our town and in the people. And I'm just so glad that we were able to share our passions and our, and our interests with you. Thank you.
Paris.